Hello, citizens of God, I'm welcome to the political vigilante. What's up? We're talking more Bitcoin. We are talking more Bitcoin. Because I like talking about it. It was cool being in El Salvador for two months. Talking Bitcoin. Um, I'm already working on getting back down there. I was just speaking to somebody uh, who is a, a bigger company I know that is going down there. Who knows? Who knows what's happening? Thank you for watching, everybody, over on the Rockfin, the YouTube, and on, you know, and on uh, the Twitter. The Twitter. Hello. Hello. Um, bam. All right. Bam. Welcome. Let me just check this. Here we go. Make sure we got everything, everything dialed in. All right. Yeah, we're going to talk about uh, Natalie Brunel was on Fox Business, and uh, she's a big Bitcoiner, and she completely blew up <laughs> Peter Schiff. Ah, beautiful. It was beautiful. Uh, and then we're going to do, uh, we're just talking about Bitcoin having is coming up on the 20th. It's it's a stoner's, it's a Bitcoin stoner's dream that Bitcoin having is happening on the 20th. Looks like that's for sure when it's going to happen. And um, cool. I know there's parties literally all over the world. There are Bitcoin parties all over the world. Um, I know there's a big one in Santorini, which is an island in Greece. Never been to Greece? I don't know. I've never been to Greece. That's a great line from M. Emmett Walsh, who passed away uh, earlier this year. Fantastic character actor. It was a Coen Brothers movie, Blood Simple. I don't know. I've never been. Someone's like, well, you know, in Greece, they do it this way. And he goes, I don't know. I've never been to Greece. Call it Greece, Greece. It's really good acting. It's just, I love it. Yes, I got this in El Salvador. Yes, I did. Um, bam. So, yeah, where else are we? Yeah. All right. Let me just get some things queued up. Weather's finally getting warmer here in Los Angeles. And uh, which is good. We've had some cold and some rain since I've been back. I got back April 2nd, and it's finally warming up a little bit. I think I might actually, I have to pull the, I have to, 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 um, I gotta, I gotta go back and surfing in cold water. El Salvador, the water is so warm. It was so great. Um, thank you everybody watching over on Rockfin. Good to see you. Rock, the Rock Finnegan's. Um, Good to see you. Bam. Bim, bam, pow. And we just, uh, just check this real quick. Um, I 
All right. Well, let's do our first segment. Let's get that queued up. All right, we'll be back and doing this segment in less than 10 seconds. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. Hello, citizens of Gotham. We want, we're talking more Bitcoin because I like Bitcoin. I, I'm a big Bitcoin proponent. We are, what is today? The 16th. We're probably four days away from the halving, which is when the supply of, of, of Bitcoin that is mined is cut in half. And, um, you know, it's pretty amazing. So the price is, uh, every time there's a halving, the price typically goes up. <clears throat> so, and then there's people like Peter Schiff. So Peter Schiff is a big financial guy who is wrong about, but he didn't get Bitcoin. And unlike a, a lot of people like five, six, seven, eight years ago, 2014, 2015 said, ah, Bitcoin, stupid Bitcoin's dumb. A lot of them have come turned around and go, actually, I was wrong. Peter Schiff won't, and then he doubles down on why gold is better. And obviously he owns money in gold. You know, he owns, he owns gold. So he's a big proponent of gold, but I don't know, gold's an all right asset, but you know, if you have a hundred thousand dollars in gold coins, you can't send it to someone around the world with your phone. Like you can't travel with it. <laughs> it's pretty hard to travel with it, right? So, um, I don't know why he insists on, like he feels threatened by it. And so there's a woman, Natalie Brunel, who she has a Bitcoin podcast and she's a big Bitcoin proponent. And she has some, if you watch, if you go to Swan Bitcoin channel, Swan, swanbitcoin.com, you know, and she's really like a lot of Bitcoiners, she's super positive. She gets what it is. She's really just trying to educate and empower people. And so Peter Schiff, I mean, he literally sounds like the dumb old man who's like, these four guys from Liverpool with their crazy, crazy haircuts, that Beatles hullabaloo, that'll never last. Like, he just sounds like that, that guy that was wrong at every point in history, you know, just like rock and roll music, forget it. You know, like the, ah, the internet that won't last. Who's going to go shopping on a computer when they can go to a store? Like, he's just that guy. I, I, I just like, you know, just, and I think it's not that he doesn't get it. I think he, his ego is so in the way that he can't, he can't admit fault. So, and this is just how Natalie just chews them up. And, and on Bitcoin Twitter, um, it's kind of great because everyone just like retweeted this. If Natalie were smart, as soon as this segment is over, she would sell all of her Bitcoin. Because <laughs> if she doesn't sell it now, she's going to sell it later at a much lower yeah, price. Right. Well, them's what we call fighting words. Uh, and I think that similar drivers are both. But let me introduce the two, uh, Natalie. Natalie, meet Peter. Peter, meet Natalie. All right, Natalie, some choice words for you. What would you tell Peter? Oh, I know Peter. And you know what? Bitcoiners don't feel the need to constantly attack gold because we're not threatened by gold. And the reason that we have this failed fiat experiment that has impoverished our nation is because of the defects of gold. The fact that it's not easily portable, it's not easily verifiable, it doesn't offer instant final global settlement. And so you know what? Centralized authorities hijacked it, they papered over it, and we have a system of leverage and rehypothecation that hurts the working class. Bitcoin is immune to all of that. It is the savings account for billions of people that we really need and, and can most rely on. And it offers that final global settlement that we need. And so gold is the analog version of sound money, but Bitcoin is the digital version, and that's why it's going to be the faster horse yeah. in this race. Peter? There's, there, there's nothing sound about Bitcoin. It's losing the race right now. Take a look at your screen. Gold is up $25, $26, and Bitcoin is getting clobbered. You know, the, there is no flaw in gold. gold this is just like, this is a guy that, that 
like how many times has he said whenever Bitcoin has a pullback, which it's having a pullback right now, it's at 63, 64,000. It might even be spiking up, but it gets to an all time high a month ago of 73,000. And now it's pulled back to 60, between 63 and 65,000, 65, $65,000 a coin. And that's like, ah, Bitcoin's failing. Like, I don't, what, what is he going to, and every time then it, it starts bull running and everyone makes fun of this guy. He's such a, he's just like a double, he doubles down on his stupidity and his jackassery. It's, it's, it's hilarious to watch. And she just like with a smile on her face, just keeps blowing him apart. So he makes these dumb claims that don't make any sense. But Bitcoin is, is really flawed because it doesn't have any actual value. Gold is the most useful metal on the periodic table. That's why it's money. Now, it has great characteristics that make it better money than other commodities. But absent its intrinsic right. value, it, it couldn't be money. And Bitcoin has no intrinsic value. It's well, just a digital just for one second of because, numbers. Because and all of this anything, is just a bunch of hype. Anything could be money, right? On the island of Yap, they used to have big stone, uh, stone money. Anything could be money uh, if people uh, use it as an exchange. And this is the thing. But that's because they. But here's the thing, though. You have to. No, no. Bitcoin is on the rise. Wall Street has embraced it. Uh, and this is just a tiny speck. I mean, could you imagine? Could you imagine, Peter, at the rate of, of recognition, if Bitcoin keeps going at this rate, it's hard to deny it can go substantially higher. Now, I just told you it's been dropping. For two and a half years, that's what it. That, it what it hit all time high recently. And I think that decline is going to accelerate. It, 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 it does not keep going up. They suckered in a bunch of people. Wall Street didn't embrace it. They're just trying to make a buck off it. I mean, these big Wall Street firms aren't buying any Bitcoin with their own money. This is their customers' money that are dumb enough to buy it. They're just booking the bets. They're operating a casino. They're not at the blackjack tables or the Natalie roulette wheels. Natalie that's wants their to, customers that are doing that. Natalie wants to jump back in. You know, if you look at the short term, Bitcoin is going to be volatile. But if we zoom out, Bitcoin has outperformed gold. In fact, when Hamas attacked Israel, since then, Bitcoin is up 125 percent and gold is up only 27 percent. So let's really look at the numbers that we're seeing. And the best thing about Bitcoin is, again, no one controls the ledger, whereas gold is really vulnerable to centralization and top down control, which is why we need a system that Remember, is a neutral place I, to store your wealth. We need a neutral system. Now, and don't even compare. Bitcoin Peter, Peter, why, can't Bitcoin. why can't someone have exposure to both? Yeah, well, first of all, Bitcoin has outperformed everything. So don't compare it to gold. It's outperformed stocks, real estate, bonds, collectibles. That's because it's a gigantic bubble. No, if you want to own Bitcoin, I, I don't care. If you want to lose money in Bitcoin, go right ahead. It doesn't bother me. But I'm trying to help. No, 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 no. Yes, it does. Yeah, yes, it does. You wouldn't be getting all mad on a show like this, Peter. If it did, if it if it truly didn't bother you, why would you care? And you just said it. It's outperforming everything. Okay, so just you, you, you gotta you gotta understand what you're saying. <laughs> People advice as to what to do with their money, and if they want to have an investment portfolio, Bitcoin has no part in it. But you know, if you like gambling, if you want to take some of the money that you want, we're going to take to the racetracks or buy lottery tickets with or go to Vegas, and you want to take some of that money and gamble on Bitcoin or any of the other 20,000 cryptocurrencies that are out there, go right ahead. If it doesn't bother me, but I don't want to buy any Bitcoin. I mean, sure, had I bought Bitcoin years and years ago when I first learned about it, yeah, I could have made yeah, a lot of money yeah, selling yeah. it now. You to could. The greater not, not years ago, Peter. 14 months ago? I mean, you know, January of 2023, Bitcoin was 19,000 a coin. Not years and years and years ago. Just you would have you would have 3x'd your money if you would have bought it a year ago, a little over a year ago. You would have 3x'd your money. Okay, so so once again, you're you're wrong. You don't know what you're saying cuz you're dummy, but that's all right. I think I think the American dream has really been hijacked 
we we tried gold it didn't work it was papered over that system has failed the american people and bitcoin does provide hope for us the working class we want to be able to work for something that has to be measured by a free market so that we can see real value emerge as opposed to being captured by politics and bureaucracy which ultimately is a system that benefits the few at the at the expense of everyone else and it's a system in which the politically connected and the special interest groups really are at the right. top and so we need a system that is for natalie, the people bitcoin is for the people natalie thank you very much peter thank you very much liz Lehman, over to you i was enjoying that <laughs> bitcoin is oh peter schiff <laughs> ah peter I'm just going to talk. If I talk louder, the the louder, then that means I'm right. I'm going to just talk louder. And, you know, the great thing about this clip, we're all going to be playing it when Bitcoin hits 100 grand a coin, 200 grand a coin. You know, we're all going to play this. We're all going to play this. So, and here's some hard numbers that Peter Schiff, I guess, doesn't want to enjoy or acknowledge, I guess. There's $400 trillion in global assets, right? If you add up all of the investment accounts, everybody's savings account, retirement, diamonds, gold, stocks, 401ks, you add it all up. There's $400 trillion in uh, assets around the world. Bitcoin currently has about $1.3 trillion in assets. So it doesn't even have 1% of global assets, which would put it at $4 trillion, which is a, basically a 3X from where it's at today. So a 3X from where it's at today, it's at 64, 65,000. That was from yesterday. Let's check the price right now. Just get a real-time price. The price of Bitcoin here, uh, Tuesday, the 16th is 60. Okay. So yeah, 63, seven, 63,000. So a 3X from that would be $180,000. Roughly, almost 190,000. That's a 3X. So if it just takes 4%, gold currently has roughly $14 trillion. Of the $400 trillion in total assets, 14 trillion of it is gold. That's how many people are investing with gold. You know, everybody says just buy gold. It's pretty sure fire. Okay. But Gold has been going up a little bit, but gold for over time is, as Natalie pointed out, Bitcoin has overtaken gold. So what if, what if Bitcoin just some people pull their money out of gold because Bitcoin starts performing better, which it already has, as Natalie pointed out, Bitcoin is performing better, has been performing better just since this last fall. What if Bitcoin just gets, you know, half of the gold money what if bitcoin goes from 1.3 trillion to roughly seven trillion dollars well that's a six x so now we're at three hundred and sixty thousand dollars to a coin <laughs> when the fiat system really starts to collapse people are going to look for a place to put their money some people will put it in gold but if if the us dollar collapses then where are they going to put their money? Eventually, they're going to put it in Bitcoin. Well, that's, and how do I know this? That's what happened when COVID hit. When the whole world got shut down four years ago in roughly March 15 of 2020, right around that time, the whole America, everybody got shut down. The Bitcoin price dropped to like below 4,000. It was like 3,000 something. And Industries were shut down and all that stuff that we all lived through, right? And then everybody started putting money in the Bitcoin. And then the Bitcoin halving happened in April or May, it happened in May, I think, of, of 2020. So from March 2020, Bitcoin went from $3,800 roughly to an all-time, the previous all-time high of 68000 in 14 months. 13 months, March to April, 13 months in a year. And sure, the price has been pulled back and whatever, but 
And the percentage of people who won't sell their Bitcoin keeps growing. People who just buy Bitcoin and hold on to it, the hodlers, such as myself. I mean, please, let, let Peter Schiff keep saying, oh, it's dumb, it's blah, 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 blah. It's like he, it's Natalie said it. He goes, we don't feel, we don't have, the, like Bitcoiners aren't like, gold is awful. We don't say that. I don't know any Bitcoiners that say that. Some Bitcoiners probably own gold, but we're all just like, yeah, gold, and you might, might want to own gold. Maybe real estate's okay, but Bitcoin's the best one. It's the fastest horse in the race. Everybody is, we already know, but we don't need to like, Anyway, it's great to see these people who don't get it. They love people who don't get it love to shoot their mouths off to like lock it in. Lock in and it's on now that clip is going to play forever. <laughs> Cuz there's another clip when Bitcoin was at $1100 where Peter Schiff said it's not going anywhere. Right? Follow the money, connect the dots, get the truth, and shave your knuckles for justice. But yeah, let's play this one real quick. Um, here. Here we go. No, no, 300, no, 000, no, 300, 000 transactions no. a day. No merchants accept Bitcoin. They work with a company called BitPay. They accept okay. dollars. What happens is there are no merchants that price their merchandise in Bitcoin. It's impossible. So they're, no, they're they it's a price, gimmick they to do try to pretend. It it's their choice no, if they, they want don't. to convert it back to fiat dollars. It's no. being, it's being used in trade no. finance between no. Brazil let, and China. I didn't they're interrupt actually you. They're using it. They're you're in, missing the whole story here. They're you're using, missing no, it. They're using. People are using it to circumvent currency laws to transfer money out of China. They are not really no, using it in commerce. No merchants are price. You find me a merchant that is pricing their merchandise in Bitcoin. I will like this is one Bitcoin. This is All right, this again. This is in tw this, this is in 20, uh, 2017 when the Bitcoin price was what is that? A, just under twelve hundred dollars. <laughs> so. He's historically wrong. He goes on these shows and shoots his mouth off. I don't know why these shows keep having him on. Maybe he's he's good entertainment or something, but there he is, wrong again. Seven years ago, he was wrong. Bitcoin is dumb. Don't you wish you could have bought Bitcoin when it was uh, $1,100? I do. <laughs> I, I don't a lot of it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, support what we do. Shave your knuckles for justice and buy Bitcoin. Boom. All right. Let's get our next, hold on, there's this, no, that's not it, this. Um, all right, let's get this queued up. All right. We'll be back with another. Hello, citizens of Gotham. My name is Graham Elder, and you are watching The Political Vigilante. Well, the Bitcoin halving is four days away. 420, it's happening. Bitcoin stoners, this is this is this is like your perfect, your perfect moment. Um so the halving is coming and the price has had a little pullback. It hit an all-time high last month of 73,000.
previous all time high was three years ago at 68, 69,000, I believe. So it's got a previous all time high. And there's been a pullback because everybody knows when the halving hits, there's literally the, the number of Bitcoins that can be mined per day is cut in half. And there will only ever be 21 million total Bitcoin ever in existence, not one more. So, and for those of you who are new to the space, you think you have to buy a full Bitcoin at 63,000. You do not. You can buy $10 of a Bitcoin. Each Bitcoin is broken up into 100 million Satoshis, right? So you could buy one 100 millionth of a Bitcoin if you wanted to. So um, that's why it can be used in digital transactions. I've seen it. I've been in El Salvador where like people who have little pupuserias are like um, buying, I've, 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 I've bought food with it. I've rented cars with it. I've rented surfboards with it. I've, you know, paid people. I mean, it's, it's, and it's, you have a lot li like a, a lightning wallet and there's a QR code. He's bing bang. It's like pretty, pretty easy, man. Um, so that is coming. And when we go into a bull run, which a bull market, which we're, we're just in the beginning of all these like more money comes into it. And the thing to be careful of is not to get caught up into a crypto scam. Crypto and Bitcoin are different. Bitcoin is digital gold. Crypto is like digital stocks. And we call them shit coins in El Salvador because we don't want them, you don't, we don't want to get scammed. And that happens a lot of it. it. Happened to me. You get in and you think, oh, there's all these coins and this one's five cents and it's going to go to a thousand and I'm going to be a millionaire or whatever. So don't get don't get caught up in that hype. So crypto.com, they have, there's a story out where they're, they're an exchange and they have their own coin, which I used to think, oh, this is great what they're doing, but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend any money on any of these altcoins anymore. And I used to tell people I was a crypto guy and now I've become a Bitcoin maximalist. So if anyone's like, Graham, you said I didn't know enough back then. And I can admit when I'm wrong, unlike Peter Schiff, who's an idiot, <laughs> people who can't admit fault. They come from, that's a position of weakness. They think they're coming from a position of strength, but it's a position of fear. Like I never, if I can never, I'll never admit wrong because then people will think I'm, it's a position of fear. Position of admitting wrong. I was wrong. And the purpose of this show has always been to educate and entertain. I hope it's entertaining and I hope you learn something from it. So if I gave some information at the time, I believed it to be true and I got more information and now I've changed my stance. And the reason I changed my stance is because I had Max and Stacy on my show three years ago and they really educated me and helped me become a Bitcoin maximalist. And then I saw what happened with FTX and BlockFi and I was like, oh, wow, this is not good. So that's why I'm a big proponent of Bitcoin and not just buying Bitcoin, but keeping it in cold, a cold wallet, cold storage off of the exchanges because the exchanges can't be manipulated. So I want to preface all that with this. This story ultimately is a good thing and it is bullish because crypto.com, more jobs are coming in during a bear market. Money pulls out. People don't want to hire. So this is uh, crypto.com hiring again as digital asset employment revives. So more people are coming into the space. Major digital asset exchange crypto.com is in the middle of Hiring drive, they could see a headcount grow by a total of 1,400 people, the latest sign of an improvement employment outlook in the sector. All right. And here's the, here is the interview with the CEO. Obviously, we are very pleased with uh, the change in the Hong Kong environment in terms of uh, approach to digital assets. Uh, there has been a new framework that uh, came out from the regulatory perspective, and this recent conditional approval of uh, Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum ETFs is a sign of uh, of, of a general support for uh, the market development in Hong Kong. So we're quite pleased with it. And how does Hong Kong compare to a market like Korea, for instance, where there is great interest in crypto among our retail investors and you're launching your app at the end of the month? How do you expect to do in a market like Korea? Uh, Korea has historically been very difficult for overseas players to enter, and we've spent almost two years preparing for launch. 
uh, it's obviously one of the largest uh, um, crypto markets globally with a very, very high adoption rate and extremely active uh, retail user base. So we'll see how we do. Uh, we are in it for the long term. Um, uh, we've entered through acquisition of two licenses and a very prolonged product build out. So we'll do our best to provide uh, a competitive uh, product offering to Korean consumers. All right. So I don't want to get too much into that. I don't, I don't want this to become a, uh, a crypto show, but uh, the reason I'm pointing this out, way, it, 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 it shows you that there's a bull market coming and this, but, but I also point this out to you to be very skeptical. Crypto.com, it's fine if you want to buy some Bitcoin and then move it to a cold wallet. It also has a debit card. If you want to use it in, you know, everyday occurrences or something like that, if you're, you know, but be careful of these exchanges because they get new users. You come in and you hear about this Bitcoin thing. Oh, this sounds cool. And then you think, oh, Bitcoin's unaffordable. And then they have all of these stake you run here and it's scams to really take your money when all you should be doing is buying Bitcoin. <laughs> I'm not, this is not financial advice. I'm not a blah, blah, blah. You know that, right? But so this is the thing to be leery of. Um, there, there, there's of them getting new people who have FOMO, fear of missing out. Oh, I got to get on this Bitcoin thing. And then you see some coin, the crypto doc, or some other coin and you go, oh, I'm going to buy this. And I own some of those altcoins. I'm not going to lie. I've sold, I've liquidated most of them. But now I tell people, just buy Bitcoin. Don't mess with any of these other things. So ultimately, this is a bullish thing that more people are coming in with. But you got to be careful because the, the, there's a lot of scammers. And I don't know if crypto.com is a scam. I don't know. But the exchanges, they're just necessary things that you need to buy Bitcoin. And you have to then figure out how to tie it to a bank account because you have to get fiat in there on the exchange to buy the Bitcoin. But I would convert your dirty fiat money to Bitcoin on an exchange and then get it off of there. That's what I would do. So that's what this is. <laughs> that's what I'm telling you guys to do. So file your money, file the money, connect the dots and get the truth and be, be cautious, ask, ask questions. Just buy Bitcoin, hold it, keep it on a cold wallet. That's what I say to you. But the Bitcoin price, but the Bitcoin price by the end of the year in my estimation will probably be somewhere near a hundred thousand dollars a coin so take what you you know take what you can afford five to ten percent of your assets put a little bit in bitcoin and you'll be happy you did because if you hold it for five years you will make money it'll be it'll short bitcoin has a lot of short-term volatility don't get all caught up in that oh i should have bought it and sold it buy it set it aside hold on to it Follow the money connected dots, get the truth. Shave your knuckles for justice and buy Bitcoin. There are much better gold analysis than Peter Schiff. Not easy to find though. Peter is just the loudest. Yeah, I think you're right, Creative Experiments. That's They just put him on these shows because he's just a loud mouth and they know they're going to get good clips. I think that's like what he's doing. He's just like doing a Jim Cramer or just the, ah, I'm going to just, he just shoots his mouth off. That's what it feels like to me. Um, Johan Sven, good to see you on the show. So that's, uh, that's what I, that's what I think that's going on. Um, well, that's cool folks. I just wanted to kind of do a quick show, come in unless you have more questions for me. Otherwise, uh, I was going to, Grab some dinner and go see the movie Civil War. I haven't seen it yet. Where do you recommend buying Bitcoin if you don't go through an exchange? Well, that's the great question. So I, I don't I don't know another way to buy it without getting going through an exchange. So, but uh, you know you can use VPNs, and I've heard of some other ways to do that. You could just buy it from a friend, but I I, I would recommend using an exchange, but then don't leave it on the exchange. That's the key point, and especially if you live in America or a first world country where you have to like, you have to get the fiat money to the exchange, the US dollars or the euros or whatever you're using 
to buy the Bitcoin. The key though is don't leave it on the exchanges because exchanges can get shut down. Coinbase has been suspended several times this year. Like it, and you know, I've heard some Bitcoiners talk about after the halving, there's not, there's going to be a scarcity of Bitcoin. There's not going to be enough Bitcoin on the exchanges. And what you don't want is you buy Bitcoin and you leave it on an exchange. And then the exchange goes, Ooh, we don't have enough. Cause what the exchanges are doing are exactly what regular bank accounts are doing. I'm going to show you this video. It's a great question, Aaron. Great question. So this is what we know can happen in a regular bank. So let me just bring this up here. I'm going to go to this site. We're going to go here. Okay, there's this. Why? No, I'd like to, it's for if the car's payments for in cash, and I can't, I can't use a bank card. Yeah, it's private. It's really for my friend. From your friend? Yeah, but he wants it in cash. Can you think you like anything that you can just do? No, I don't, you don't need that. Bro, what is it? I'm only asking for three. What, what is this? I, I, it's my money. I'm allowed to withdraw from my own bank account. Yeah, so I he said that what's the maximum limit you can give a withdrawal to a customer? It's three thousand dollars on the day. You've already mentioned that multiple times. Yeah, not today. Why not today? But why you don't you see any proof of what it is? Why is that? And why is that? Why is that? Why do you need? Why do you need to tell you what it is? Why do you need? What kind of proof is that? I bring in a note. Like what? How's that? What's that? Gonna change? I don't understand. You, know, you need to give my money. I'm not taking a bank out of like cash, please. No. That way, I'm just gonna sit here until you give me cash. So I'm not gonna leave. Okay, well, do you want to get what to do? And then do what? Or who am I waiting for? I can get the manager. Oh, yeah, get the manager because this is not unbelievable. Yeah. So, what you're watching there. I can't. Well, wait, I don't understand. What are you talking about? <laughs> Hold on, let me shut this down. So, what you're watching there is somebody trying to get their money out of a bank, their cash. And they're, the bank is saying, we don't have it. Most banks don't have the cash on hand. So crypto exchanges are doing the same thing. So there's a saying in Bitcoin, not your keys, not your Bitcoin. So the keys are the 12 to 24 word phrase. That's how you get your Bitcoin. That's why you want it off of an exchange and onto a cold wallet, because it is the equivalent, leaving your, your Bitcoin on an exchange is the equivalent of leaving a bunch of money in the bank and then the bank doesn't have it because what the crypto exchanges are doing is they're gambling, they're doing staking and all this other stuff, right? Which is re what re regular banks are doing. The reason that bank doesn't have this guy's $3,000 and it's his money and he's like, why do I have to give you a note that I'm going to buy a car? It's, 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 it's preposterous, right? because they don't have as much, they don't have the cash. That's when you have a run on the banks. So you'll have a run on the exchanges that happened to FTX that happened to BlockFi because BlockFi was doing a thing called staking. You can leave your Bitcoin or your whatever Ethereum on there, but I had some Bitcoin on there and there was, it was earning interest. But then Max Geyser came on my show three years ago and said, don't leave it on those exchanges. The interest isn't worth it because they could just seize your Bitcoin and it's gone. So if you, you I, I don't know of a way to buy Bitcoin without using an exchange, right? So you have to use an exchange and you have to pay some fees to do it. Okay. But then learn what cold storage is. You can get cold wallets for a lot of them under a hundred bucks. I wouldn't, I don't know that I trust Ledger. Trezor's okay. There's some other ones out there as well. I personally use Trezor. Some people think there's even safer versions, but you want it. Keeping it on a cold wallet is the equivalent of pulling your cash out of the bank and keeping it in a safety deposit box or a safe or something like that. That's what that means. So I hope that I hope that makes sense. Blaze Ever Wolf, our moderator is here. I'm holding the IBIT ETF. I think it's through BlackRock and Coinbase. Shave your knuckles with justice. Still recovering mentally from buying and selling a bunch of coins a couple of years ago. Has there been any news on if any changes are coming for US taxes? That's a great question. I don't know. I mean, I filed my taxes this year in February and the difference from four years ago, like the exchanges now, if you're in the United States, will generate 
a document for the IRS. I forget the form number, 89, whatever. I forget the form number. Anyway, and then I submitted that to my accountant. This is how much I bought and sold. This is how much I made and lost. And you submit that to the IRS. Um, be sure you stand next to your friend for 15 minutes after you give them your money to make sure the transaction went through. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I hope that answered your question. Setting up my wallet tonight, I bought a Trezor one. Great. Great. So yeah, whatever you buy on an exchange, move it to your cold wallet. I mean, if you're planning on day trading or, or whatever, then, um, you know, you might want to leave a little bit on an exchange, like, but like I kept some on an exchange when I was in El Salvador because then I'd have to move it to a, a lightning wallet to pay for stuff. Um, but the bulk of it is all on a cold wallet. Um, thanks for answering my question. I'm trying to prepare to reduce coins and change to Bitcoin and try to get a wallet. Yeah. You bought a treasure. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad these questions help. That's what, that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I was doing when I was uh, guest hosting uh, Orange Pill. is um is educate educate and entertain especially in this bull market everyone's buying doesn't know what it is thanks graham you helped me finally look into bitcoin good good it's the people's money man you know just as the price of bitcoin goes up which it has since its inception in 2009 i think it was first released 08 09 the white paper came out around then its purchasing power goes up. There's a, a meme that was going around. I believe Max Kaiser retweeted it. That was like, the price of a home in America, the average price of a home in 2016 was like $220,000 or something, $230,000. And the Bitcoin price back then, it would have cost you something like, 600 Bitcoin, right? The price in 2020 of a home was 400 some thousand dollars, which would have cost you in 2020 would have cost you, you know, 50 some Bitcoin or whatever. And now the price of Bitcoin to buy the average home cost is, you know, or no, it was, I think it was, yeah, in 2020, the average home price was like 360 or 370. And so it would have cost you like 15 or 20 Bitcoin. And now today's home cost is $430,000, roughly an average price in America, which would cost you, you know, six Bitcoin or seven. So he's basically, even though the home prices have gone up, the fact that the value of Bitcoin has gone up. So your purchasing power with Bitcoin goes up. With fiat, let's say you were paid $1,000 four years ago, that $1,000 is now worth less because things are more expensive. You lost your purchasing power. Bitcoin purchasing power, every time the price goes up, its purchasing power goes up. Really helpful. Um. Well, right on, everybody. Cool. Great questions. This is really cool. Um, it's it's I'm I'm love when you guys ask really, really good questions. It's really it 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 makes I like having these discussions. It makes for a good show. Um great analysis. Will you attend the having party in El Salvador? Oh, I will not be there for that. Also, can you provide the name of a reliable cold wallet? The banks are in big trouble. Yes, they are. Um, I won't be at the having party. I wish. I'm hoping to be back in El Salvador by the summer. Uh, I just, there's a project I'm working on. There's two projects I'm working on here. Um, that, that's why I got to be up here. And I've got some shows I'm doing up here as well. But I can't wait to get back. El Salvador was great. And I, I love I love all the Bitcoiners down there. The Salvadorians are great. The weather, I just love it. So I'll be back down there. Um a reliable cold wallet. So the one that I use uh, is Trezor, the Trezor wallets. I like them. Um, there's some other wallets out there. You might want to follow on Twitter, the Bitcoin hardware store. 
uh, that's run by Ronnie. I interviewed him on the Orange Pill podcast and on this show too. The, so if you look at my interview with Ronnie from the Bitcoin hardware store, it's on my Bitcoin playlist. He runs the uh, Bitcoin hardware store. Now, I don't think they, they don't ship to the US. You got to go there in person. But he's a guy that would be able to answer more questions on the best wallets. But the one I use is Trezor and I like the Trezor wallet. And, and there's, there's several versions of it. There's a, their entry level affordable one is about, I think $75, $80. And then you can, it goes up to maybe about 130, 150 from there. Um, so, um, so yeah, blaze saver wolf makes a great point with BTC with Bitcoin, your purchasing power will fluctuate with fiat. The power only seems to decline. That's true. It just keeps going. Everything keeps going up and up and your purchasing power with fiat just keeps going. It just keeps getting worse. There's like no way to get around it. It's brutal. It's absolutely brutal. So, um, yeah, that's a great point. Blaze silver wolf. And thank you for being our moderator. Um, great questions, everybody. Great discussion. I like talking Bitcoin, man. There's hope in the Bitcoin space. There's hope in the Bitcoin space. Um, Awesome. Thank you so much for the info. Yeah. Um, and also I would watch some YouTube videos like how to move my wallet to cold storage. And there's a lot of good tutorials out there. Swan Bitcoin has some good videos. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll make some. Look at that. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, all right, everybody. This is a great little quick Live stream will be live again tomorrow, uh, five o'clock Pacific doing government secrets and we'll be doing more. Um, yeah. So check that out. Um, do you think crypto inflation will ever be a thing? What do you mean by crypto inflation? Do you mean like the price of crypto will get inflated? I don't know that that's possible. Well, the altcoins, man, I don't know. Bitcoin, I don't know if the price will ever be inflated. The Bitcoin price is based on how much money flows into it, you know? So I think actually Bitcoin currently is undervalued. Um, um, the same way it is now with fiat. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, I, you know, that, 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 that's a great question. And I don't know that I have the answer for that. Um, Blaze Silver Wolf is, that's a great question. That would, that, that would have to mean that the real cost that cryptocurrencies and digital currencies would be inflating. I don't know. I don't know with Bitcoin. I don't think Bitcoin could do that. The altcoins maybe, but that's a great question. And I don't, I don't know. Yeah, like I said, Bitcoin is completely undervalued. Again, I'm 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 become I've become a Bitcoin maxi, so I I'm not going to really I don't really follow the altcoins anymore. I don't really know what's what with them. But yeah, Bitcoin's undervalued. So great question, man. Great question. <laughs> Here's a great question. Um Yeah. Crypto in general, not specifically Bitcoin. Yeah, crypto in general, I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, I don't want, I don't know that I don't know enough about that. But great question. Great question. <laughs> like a, the, any quite a question that gets the wheels spinning is a good question, I think. Um, that's cool. That's cool. Um, yeah, we got 95 some people watching across all the platforms. That's really awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, streaming on Twitter is kind of a cool thing. Um, GBDC has tripled since October. Are you sure it's undervalued? Call me a Debbie Downer. Well, yeah, I think, yes, it has tripled since October. Um, I still think it's undervalued based on as I was saying earlier, right now it only has $1.3 trillion of a $400 trillion um, 
the ET GBTC is the ETF tracker. I think if you look at what Bitcoin is in terms of there will only ever be 21 million coins, when you look at it that way, and there's already 19 million in circulation and there's still all of this money. There's 399, 98 trillion dollars that are not in Bitcoin. I think, yes, I do think it's undervalued. Even though it's gone up, it's gone up three times. It's had a three X since, since last year, which is a good point. I still think it's undervalued. Um, total gold market cap is 16 trillion. Yeah. So if, if even Bitcoin overtakes gold a little, think about what it would do to the price. Right. We should, we should all agree never to buy on the way up though. Well, in the short run, that's not great, but if you buy up on the way up and if your plan is to hold for a long time, then that won't really hurt you. If your plan is to buy and sell, I don't advocate. I mean, I'm, I'm like a Michael Saylor. I'm becoming more like Michael Saylor. Who's like, never sell your Bitcoin. But if you want to pull out some profits, I mean, that's up to you. That's your own personal financial situation. You might need to, to sell some to pay bills or to pay off some debts or whatever. But, um, yeah, my brother-in-law thinks it's going back down to the, to the 20. Hmm, I don't know about that. We haven't had the having yet. The having's in six days. I don't see it going down after the having. There'll be a bull run for another 12 to 18 months after the having, but then it, it'll start coming down again, probably after the, but the having could take after the having, it could take us to 150, 200,000. And then it'll pull back down to what? A hundred, 90, you know, 90,000, a hundred thousand. I mean, that's still, so, um, all time high before having was surprising. Yeah. That's a great point. Blaze Silverwolf. There has never been a all time high before a having before. And that I think was fueled from the, the ETFs, the Bitcoin ETFs. But I, I think this bull run after the having, which again is in four days. So from, from April 20th next week to, um, April of 2025, those 12 months, I think Bitcoin will get over a hundred thousand easy. Just because that's what it's always done in the past. And you've got more money flowing into it from the ETFs. Um, Bitcoin having has always proved uh, to be a game changer in the crypto narrative, looking at the previous ones. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a great point. If you just look at what Bitcoin has always done, it always does this after a having because it's built in scarcity that whoever created Bitcoin knew what they were doing. They built in scarcity. So, um, great questions, right? Great discussions, guys. Great questions. As always, we're over a hundred people watching. That's nice. Nice. Everybody over on the rock fin say hello. If you like, um, Yeah. What is the transaction process like in El Salvador? Really a great question. So everybody uses lightning, which is off chain, which is a quicker transaction. So you'll see something like they will have, let me show you a Chivo wallet. So let's say if I'm a merchant, you buy something from me for $5. So then I would draw up on my wallet a um, dollar amount, like $5, and then I would show you that, which is a QRF code. You then, to buy something, you then do send, which is basically then there's just a camera. You put the camera, which just shows there's the camera. So you just scan the QR code, right? And then you press pay, whatever the, the again, $5.
and it happens really quickly. Now, sometimes I've seen it slow down just because the Wi-Fi wasn't great there or the cell service wasn't great. So it maybe took a little longer, but I would say 90% of the transactions I did, um, every once in a while, it was slowed down on my end because I forgot to transfer money into my lightning wallet when I was like at my apartment with good Wi-Fi. <laughs> so when I think ahead and go, yeah, I know I'm going to be doing a lot of Bitcoin purchases. Then you have it on this wallet. It's great. I mean, I remember I went hiking with the buddy and we went to lunch afterwards and we were at a restaurant that didn't accept Bitcoin and they only, I think they only took cash and I had cash and he didn't. So I paid for lunch and then he paid his half in Bitcoin and we just went bing like that. It was really fast. Every once in a while, there's a little bit of a tech glitch, but it's way, it's way quick. Um, what do you expect the BTC price to jump to after the halving? I think, I think after the halving, so the week, which is next week after the halving, I think I would see a new all time high. You'll probably see 74, 75,000 next week after the halving is what I would suspect. It'll spike the price. We've had this little pullback right before the halving, which traditionally there's always been a pullback right before the halving. So I think by next week, it'll be up to 70. I think we'll have a new all-time high of 75,000. So that's what I think. Go Lakers. <laughs> well, I'm a Bulls fan. The Bulls have the play-in game uh, tomorrow night against Atlanta. The Bulls didn't have a great basketball season. Um, I don't hate the Lakers, but if I had to pick an LA team, I'd probably go for it. I like the Clippers. Just, I like the underdog. Clippers have never won. I'm a Cub fan. I know what it's like to go a long time without a championship. So I, I, in the West, I like the Clippers. I think De Denver's probably going to repeat. If we're going to talk sports, just my opinion. I, you know, I think Denver's probably going to repeat. They're really good again. They were great last year. And I think they know how to repeat. Jokic, I wouldn't bet again. But there's a lot of good teams in the West. Um, The East, I don't know, man. Like, Milwaukee isn't as strong as I thought they were. Philly's not, you know, it feels like it's going to, Boston's going to return to the finals. I think it might be a Boston Denver finals. I'd love for the Bulls to advance past the play in. I would love that. I would love that. But I don't think that was going to happen. <laughs> um, is this a new definition of the haves and the have nots? Not a great question, Chris. It could be. That's why. I've been saying for four years to buy Bitcoin, just own some of it. So you're not one of the have nots because the wealthy people, when they're really rich, understand, and some of them already have, when they really understand what Bitcoin is, they're going to want to buy it all up. That's what rich people do. They want to own everything. So this is why I've been saying on this show for the last four years to buy Bitcoin because it's, it's the only opportunity regular people have ever had throughout human history to just own a little something that's going to go through the roof. Like you stack up, maybe you put together, I don't know, 3% of a Bitcoin, 4% of a Bitcoin, right? Which today would cost you Let's go 5% of a Bitcoin, which today would cost you 3,200 bucks, 3,300 bucks roughly. And Bitcoin goes to a million a coin. That 32, $3,300 is going to become $50,000. That's a lot of money. You know? Maybe you keep that money, hang on to it forever, bar, you know, loan, you know, get a line of credit against it, or you pay off your mortgage or whatever, you know, like you take that 50 grand or, you know, but let's see, you can buy 10% of a Bitcoin and get 10%. Now you got a hundred grand. Now maybe you, again, keep that as your retirement, borrow against it, pay off your mortgage, buy a little something that generates revenue. I don't know. I'm just saying. This is the only opportunity regular people have ever had to own one of the most scarcest things on the earth. 
No, the scarcest thing on the earth. Imagine if there was only enough gold on planet earth to make 21 million gold coins. Imagine. And you got to own a piece of one, one tenth of one, a 1% one of one of them. Imagine that. Imagine what that, what, what that would be worth. So, um, great question. Uh, I really do appreciate you, the show, being a moderator and what I've learned. Thank you so much. Leafs vegan cycling adventures. Right on. Cool. This is this has been great. Now I, I'm going to go. I got I to gotta eat. I'm hungry and I'm going to go to the movies. Maybe, you know, the Cubs are playing tonight. They won again last night. Go Cubs. Um, and uh, thank you all so much. This is really good. I love, I see, I love talking Bitcoin. I'm in a good mood. When I talk about politics in America, it just bums me out. <laughs> When I talk Bitcoin, it's positive. We're in a bull market. Things are going up. Um, what would one, what's the question? What would one Bitcoin go for today? What do you mean? Like Bitcoin is 63,000 a coin or like one bit of a coin. It gets broken into a uh, hundred million Satoshis and cut it up in a hundred million pieces. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching the show. Thank you. Blaze Silverwolf for moderator. Thank you for all your questions. Great questions. Uh, you can support our show any number of ways. Go to Patreon. Um, you would, um, excuse me, sign up for the newsletter and at grandmelwood.com. And uh, I'm working on having some tour dates too over the summer. I'll be doing some shows throughout the States. Not a bit, not a huge tour, but a couple shows here and there. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, um, yes. 63,000 is what it would cost to buy a full Bitcoin, but you could go on an exchange and buy $10 worth of Bitcoin today. That's the beautiful thing about Bitcoin. Um, so thank you so much. Have a great night. Uh, buy Bitcoin, follow the money, connect the dots, get the truth and shave your knuckles for justice. Thanks for watching everybody.